Good evening, you're watching the news on Croatian television. Five years ago today, Croatia became the 28th member of the European Union, following eight years of difficult negotiations. Celebrations were held at the Croatian National Theatre in Zagreb last night. Speaking on the occasion, top state officials commented on Croatia's path to membership, its five years in the EU and its future in the bloc. I think we are more organized than before, better, more reliable and more recognizable than we were before. And we are trying to keep our policies along those lines. The policies that we are implementing as the incumbent government and the governing party are deeply rooted in European values, and that is good for Croatia. We definitely won't allow any kind of pulling back from that trend, and we will serve as a barrier against populism and those who would like to water down everything that we have worked for over the past 30 years. We will be the guarantors of this strong European path, because it is good for Croatia and for all of our citizens, including national minorities. By signing the arbitration agreement with Slovenia, the door to completing the membership negotiations was opened. Unfortunately, Slovenia later compromised the arbitration proceedings and it is now at a standstill as we continue to call for a bilateral solution to the border issue. But the important thing for Croatia is that we achieved our goal. We are a member of the EU and didn't give in to Slovenia in the slightest. The turning point was the political support from within the bloc itself, but I would also say from the United States, because even though they are not a member state, they do wield a lot of influence over Europe. Also, our membership of the NATO alliance, which was definitely a catalyzing force in that process, because even though it is not a precondition for EU membership, it was something of tradition for countries from Central and Eastern Europe to first join NATO and then the EU. Defense Minister Damir Krstičević is on a three-day official visit to Israel. Today, the minister represented Croatia at an international conference organized by the Israeli defense industry, where he presented opportunities for strategic partnerships between the two countries. In March, Croatia bought 12 F-16 fighter jets from Israel for $500 million. Along with the F-16s, we want to develop a strategic partnership. We want to connect our two defense industries. So the focus is on connecting Croatian companies with Israeli ones. I think we can learn a lot from Israeli companies. On Tuesday, the minister is scheduled to meet with his Israeli counterpart Avigdor Lieberman and President Reuven Rivlin. In other news, in an interview for the Sunday edition of the Uterni List Daily, Prime Minister Andrei Plenković commented on government's plans to reform the pension system. He dispelled rumors that the second pillar of the pension system was being dismantled and said that government is embarking on the reforms so as to ensure the system's sustainability and retirees adequate pensions and a dignified life. If these reforms are not implemented, future pensioners will have, on average, 500 kunas less than pensioners have now, and we don't want that. Currently, we are spending 38 billion kuna on pensions. We collect 21 billion kuna through pension contributions, which means annually we are 17 billion kuna short when it comes to pensions. That amount comes out of tax revenues. Meanwhile, the HDZ's junior coalition partner, the HNS, held a party gathering today at which, among other things, they discussed pension system reform. Party chairman Ivan Verduyak said the HNS would only adopt a public position after party experts examined the proposed reforms in detail. He did, however, state their general position. The second political option is to strengthen the second pillar, because the liberal option wants citizens to have the right to pay into their pensions on their own and to be able to use their funds in the most intelligent way possible while decreasing the burden on the state. And taking a quick look at sports, Croatia beat Denmark 4-3 after penalty shots in Nizhny Novgorod today to advance to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Croatia will play Russia for a spot in the semifinals on Saturday after Russia beat Spain in penalty shots earlier today. Opening kickoff is at 8 p.m. local time in Sochi. And now the forecast for tomorrow. 
partly sunny with variable cloud cover throughout most of the country. There is a chance of some isolated showers and thunderstorms on the coast and in hinterland areas, predominantly sunny elsewhere. The coast will see a mild to moderate northeasterly strong at the foot of the Velebit Mountain shift to a southwesterly and southerly in the afternoon. Morning lows of 10 to 15 degrees Celsius inland, 17 to 22 on the coast, will give way to highs of 22 to 27 degrees in the interior, 26 to 31 on the Adriatic. The three-day forecast for the interior calls for partly sunny skies with variable cloud cover with a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures will rise gradually and winds will be for the most part mild. The coast will see predominantly sunny skies, especially in Dalmatia. The northern Adriatic will see some moderate cloud cover at times with a chance of showers and thunderstorms, especially on Wednesday. Expect warmer temperatures and mild winds. And that wraps up the news. Be sure to join us again tomorrow night.